Welcome inside another edition of the Mortgage Impact Podcast. My name is Jen Bates, your host for today, and I am joined by none other than Todd <laughs> Duncan of the beautiful Todd Duncan Podcast. I love your background in there. We have some competing backgrounds here, Todd. I got to fit inside these headphones. I guess the guys put this on my wall, and it was like an afterthought, like, all right, all I have to do is be right in between there and perfect. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I love that so much, but also uh, most people, most of our listeners will probably know you from the Sales Mastery event that is typically every year uh, in California, obviously, this yeah. year has, has changed quite a bit, Todd. So you guys are all virtual this year, but that's pretty cool because it offers a, a bunch of other opportunities for people. Well, you know, the name of your podcast is Mortgage Impact, right? And the idea yeah. behind what we're doing this year, nobody would have ever thought about this. But, you know, I think life happens, right? I, I told everybody five years ago at Mastery, I said, you know, write your life plan in pencil and be prepared to pivot. And, uh, you know, we had to pivot, we had to adjust, we had to, I mean, we're an event company and it doesn't look like we can do events anytime soon. So what do we do? Ditch the event or do we repurpose it, refigure it? So we did that. And so the, the event is coming live virtual to right now 32,000 people, Jen, if you can believe it. Wow. And that's kind of the breakthrough. I mean, the impact this year that Mastery gets to have is 10 times, 15 times maybe what the normal live audience is. And then the bonus is we get to give everybody access for 30 days to keep using the information, keep putting the, you know, the, the traction into whatever ideas and implementation they want. And uh, so I'm, I, you know, I, I could, I couldn't be more happy with our outcome, but I also realized the struggle that everybody has had getting to where we are. We have a massively powerful, you know, mortgage, uh, engine right now in the country. I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people per company every month that get to, you know, refinance or buy a home. And um, it's just like pennies are just raining down from heaven. And that's good news. But then we have the adversity of the, you know, the COVID and, and the pandemic and all that. So I believe life happens. And I believe the successful people are the ones that adjust and try to look for what's, what's the goodness in this, you know, what's the goodness. So you have to at this point, right? Because yeah. if you don't live in like, where's the good news, that's going to be a really, really miserable life uh, for, a, for a long time. And you, know, you mentioned that, um, gosh, we were just talking about mortgages hitting $1.1 trillion, like in Q2. I mean, it's just something insane. In a quarter. Uh, the num in a quarter. Yes, <laughs> in a quarter in Q2. Uh, and, and so I, I'm, in, I'm impressed by what people have been able to do. You talk about pivoting, uh, the Federal Reserve obviously helping out a lot in March and, and helping that way. Yeah. But so many people are just taking advantage of helping everybody else refinance, saving some money, and then helping a lot of people get into a house, which is really what it's all about, especially I know at Movement. And we're about to have, um, gosh, we have multiple $100 million producers when we didn't have very many the year before. We're probably going to have a $200 million producer this year. Um, so there's a lot to be excited about, but there's also a lot of ways we can constantly improve, right? And I think that's what Sales Mastery is all about. It's like things that you said, write your life in pencil, write your plan in pencil, because there's always going to be something that's, that's going to be a place for you to improve. And, and that's what people have to look forward to uh, at this event and these different breakout sessions, right? I, yeah, yeah, completely right. The vision behind Mastery when I first launched it, we had 387 mortgage professionals attend the first year. It was in 1992. And many people watching this podcast may not have been born then, you know. And I was eight. I'll give huh? you okay, There you go. I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, um, and you sit here and you look at uh, this year will be our 28th year. And there's not a brand that has lasted that long in any genre that we've seen in the personal development space. And that's a blessing. And, you know, I was asked yesterday by a guy that runs three lenders in Canada, what's the key to personal growth? And I said, real simple, if you're not developing, you're dying. And mastery isn't designed to bring some like, modernization of true principles. We do. We talk about technology. We talk about the changes. We talk about all that. But Jen, at the, at the start of everything is, is the basics don't change. You know, and the basics are you've got to have relationships. You've got to have knowledge. You've got to care. You've got to have empathy. And you have to learn how to connect no matter what world you're in. And that's how business advances. So this is our 28th year. There's been over 100,000 loan originators and, and companies attend over the years. And, um, you know, it gets down to three simple things. It's know your goals, work your goals, 
and achieve your goals. And how do we do that? So we have 41 different presenters. We have at least $3 million a year in commissionable ideas. And the neat thing that we're doing this year is we're letting companies bring their entire operations team. Yeah. I think we sometimes forget about ops and we forget that I was told when as a brand new originator, you've got to treat your processors as your partner. You've got to treat your underwriters as your partner. And, and we are, right? We can't, sales can't do anything without ops and ops doesn't have anything to do without sales. So it's a magic kind of combination. So we're excited about this year. Yeah. But yeah. it's about learning, growing and getting better. And the basics don't change, but the world in which we live asks us to do those basics uniquely and differently. How difficult is it for some people who are so driven, um, decisive, you know, we go by the DISC assessment, right? How tough are those soft skills for some people to learn? Because I imagine that for some people it comes naturally. I think for you it would probably come naturally. Like what, what are the ways people work on that? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know that it is natural. The whole thing behind DISC is that we have this kind of God-given DNA, right? We have our natural okay. style and our adaptive style. And I think adaptive is be aware of your style and then be aware of how to um, apply the chameleon effect. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a high D, and I've got somebody on my team that is a high S, I've got to do something differently in how I communicate as a leader. And if a borrower, you know, you can start to tell even the disc analysis when you're talking to a borrower, you know, are they fast or slow? Are they loud or soft? You know, eye contact or no eye contact? Do they go for a hug instead of a handshake or none of those? <laughs> and we got to be aware of that because influence, influence is about becoming more like your client so that we have in what's neuroscientifically proven, we have connection. And if I can slow down because you go slow, or I can speed up because you go fast, or I can turn it up because you talk loud, or I can soften it because you talk soft, those are neuro connections that the consumer doesn't even know are happening. And so I don't think a lot of people have that science. And I know, I know you have to connect. Period. No matter what your style is in, in the world in which we live in mortgages, you have to be able to connect. Humanity and connection is the basic desire that we as humans have. And so no matter what your style is, you got you to gotta do that. And I think connection leads to conversion. Conversion leads to pull through. Pull through leads to clients for life. And uh, yeah, but style is important. Style is important. You know, I mean, when we talk about mortgages, it may not be like a sexy topic, but you're handling people's futures, you know, and you're, so, yeah, but it is sexy, right? No, no, no. Yeah. If, you think, if you really think about it, how cool is it that we get to wake up every day and we get to help somebody design their perfect, perfect experience with a home loan, with a refi, with an investment property. I mean, how cool is it that every day we get to make somebody's dream come true? And in the case of like movement and how fast you guys have grown in your experience and how centered you are on purpose and social cause and, and all of that, and, and literally three or four or 5,000 people, 6,000 people a month, maybe more get to go through that. I think it's totally sexy, but here's the, here's the, here's the big deal. The big deal is we do more than mortgages. If we're a mortgage professional, our, our job is to help home buyers achieve financial security and wealth through home ownership. That's and our hashtag, man. More than mortgages. Every single time. We have t-shirts. Yeah. We get everything because we are more than that. Because yeah. when you look at this refinance boom, that's yep. people saving money, being able to pay off some bills. Like, you know, should there be any sort of trouble? A home is, is more than just a house. Like you're more than mortgages when it comes to that. I can agree, I can agree with you on the sexy part there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The, so, other, the other layer to this, Jen, is yeah. and I think this is, this is where the future is going. The other layer is, and it doesn't matter what country in the world we look at, as long as it's one of the top 28 domesticized countries, um, the, the biggest stress that people have is financial stress. Um, the, the number one thing that leads to discord in marriages is financial stress beyond, you know, there's one other thing we don't need to bring it up, but if I'm a loan originator, I operate differently than if I'm a home loan strategist or, you know, a, a, a mortgage strategist or whatever. And the goal beyond the mortgage is to help free you of financial stress. And so what the originator of the future needs to become is really qualified to have financial conversations 101. You know, budgeting, in, um, savings, you know, investment, uh, high interest rate debt. I mean, 
all those things. We need to help people financially because if we can help people financially beyond the mortgage, then we have that client not only for life, but more than likely if we can save their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not coming in to rescue people. We're coming in to be advisors at the highest level possible. I always tell people we are as mortgage professionals to debt what a financial planner is to assets. And if we can embrace the idea that if we can help people achieve less debt in their life, period, mortgage strategy, you know, credit card strategy, whatever, it's a solid proposition. I like that. That's a really, that's a really good way to look at it is managing yeah. debt and, and, and how we can help people do that. Yeah. I'm curious too, Todd, you know, you, you talk about connections and relationships. Obviously movement is very, very big into creating relationships, loving and valuing people. How do you connect with people, especially now when, when every, a lot of people are in houses, we're on Zoom. How do you connect with people? So I, I think that there's a couple things I could answer. One is, is I'm really um, practicing every day video connection. You know, I just, uh, on my way into the office, I live 20 minutes from my office and on the way in today, um, I recorded five videos, you know, simple. I don't look at the camera. I just hit it and people know. And I had three birthday videos and I had two thank you videos that went out this morning on the way in. And I think video, whether it's FaceTime or whether it's, you know, something like we're doing here, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's text video, what, email video, embedded video, I think connection today requires this, right? Um, and even this, there's still a, a big monitor between you and me and there's eight states between you and me. And, and yet we are connecting at the level in which the world is allowing us to connect right now. And so I think it's, it's, it's yeah. partly making the conversation come alive, right? And, and the other part of it is we know that some layer of face-to-face -face, and in COVID, the face-to-face -face we have is with these technologies, right? But in the, the non-COVID world and, 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 and this, this creates maybe a little bit of a juggling act or a bouncing act. In the non-COVID world, we still know that face-to-face -face is the best way to create connection, to have collaboration, to add real value because it's, there's a trust layer that gets to come in when we're a couple feet away from each other. And all we're doing now is we're using technology to try to do face-to-face, -face, you know, given the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. But the one fundamental thing that, that people miss, Jen, on, on connection is chemistry. And if, if, if there's not a chemistry, if there's not attraction, um, if there's not this like, I like you and you like me, you're never going to connect. And I think one of the big breakthroughs for people is to understand that, first of all, the, the world we live in right now with, with low rates and, and volume not one person that's watching this architected this. Nobody's, nobody can claim responsibility for the amount of volume we have right now. Mm -hmm. We just can't. So the, the fear side of that is what happens when this goes away? Yeah. And, 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 and so now the time to be preventive, the, the time to have an offense is, is in the next three months, get your business set up so you can have connection with the people you like, the realtors you like, the builders you like. I would be doing right now, I'd be doing a weekly business review with my realtors and everybody's going, are you kidding me? My pipeline is full with refis. Yeah, but I've watched rates go up 200 or 300 basis points in a week in my career. And believe me, your pipeline will be gone when that happens. And so the discipline of connection right now is you and me talking you know, once a week and just checking in, maybe for five minutes, maybe for 10 minutes. And I've, if I got 10 or 15 real estate agents, I can do that. I can send a gratitude message every Friday on video to each of those agents, you know, and just thank them or whoever my business partners are. But man, if there's no chemistry, Jen, yeah. there is no connection. And we, and relationships are hard enough as it is. They get a little bit easier and less dysfunctional when you and I like each other. Well, you know, that's interesting too, because when, when do you, I think this is a big question for a lot of people, you could see uh, perhaps a realtor or an LO or somebody else, a partner you work with. It's like, we just do not hit it off. When do you cut it off? And oh, so. you cut your losses there, man. Like, Hey, we just aren't getting along. It's going to be best for us. Like you find that in friendships, relationships, anything, like you have to have a point where it's like, this isn't good for either of us really. And why am I forcing it? 
here's a couple of really interesting scripts that I've used in my career. So I'll be in the middle of an interview with a new realtor, right? I've been referred to a realtor by maybe a title company or a lawyer or, or whomever. And like I'm 15 minutes into the conversation and it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll look at that, that agent. I'll say, Jen, we're about 15 minutes into our conversation and I'm learning pretty clearly that I can't give you what you need from a lender. So rather than waste any more of your time today, I want to thank you for meeting and I want, wish you continued success, you know, as you dominate in the real estate business. And I pol politely exit. And you look at that and you go, whoa. Yeah, but what's worse than that is not doing that and a month later having one loan from that agent in process and just getting it handed to you every single day, right? Yeah. If, there's, if there's any doubt, if my, my friend Tony Alessandro used to say, if two people want to do business together, the details will not get in the way. If two people don't want to do business together, the details won't make it happen. So you've got to, you've got to follow that, right? And before I ever meet with that agent that I just used that script on, I might want to call my title rep and say, hey, are we a good match? Is this agent and I, based on what you know about her or him or me, are we a good match? And if, if somebody from the outside world who I trust says, you guys are a great match, chances are I'm not going to get into a bad relationship. But if I don't do that investigative research first, then there's a chance I will. And life is too short to get involved in relationships that ultimately don't work. The other thing is, let's say I didn't do that and we've got a pipeline and there's eight loans and it's just ugly. It is just ugly then I have to do something like this. You know, Jen, I've spent the last three days evaluating my business and I've just come to an, a conclusion that I cannot give you what you actually need from a lender. So rather than modifying my whole system, I want to thank you for the business we've had. We're going to close out these eight loans, but I want to encourage you to find a lender that can serve you the way you'd like to be served. I'm not making anybody bad and wrong. I'm not saying you are high maintenance and you're a pain in the butt, I'm, I'm, but which is kind of what I maybe want to say. All but the things you want to say versus what you need to say. I do it, I do it gracefully, you know, and I, I don't want to, listen, I don't wake up every day thinking, you know, who can I make life difficult for? What I wake up every day thinking is my life is difficult enough. I don't need a couple layers of people that make it more difficult. My dad told me when I was 16, he said, your life is going to be around your five closest friends, whoever you associate with, you know, those people. And, you know, we know if we're in the wrong relationships, they don't work, they become dysfunctional. Or worse, you just start not paying attention to them, which yeah. is like, yeah. it's not high road. You know, we tell leaders, um, hire slow, fire fast. Hire slow, fire fast. If I'm gonna bring on new business referral partners, go slow. And at the first sign of it being like, whoa, I missed it, do something about it. That could be a conversation to try and fix the relationship. Um, it could be terminating the relationship. I think the industry needs to really continue to sharpen their, their skills on who they do business with and why. I can't tell you how many people have, have asked me in, in the years, so what do you do with a realtor that like calls you every night at 10 o'clock? My first answer is don't pick up the phone because <laughs> when you pick it up, you That's say, it's, um, You're letting you say it's okay. Yeah. And you know, there's most LOs don't have really protective and powerful self boundary. That's really and tough. Life is, life is an absolute function of the boundaries you have and the guardrails you set up. That makes me think of when I was a kid at the dinner table, anybody calling 7 p.m. My father was on that landline, like, why are you calling at 7? This is dinner and like hanging up. It didn't matter who it was. It could be right. his own parents. Be like, it's dinner time. You have to set those boundaries. And people really struggle with that because they want to. And I know at Movement, we're like this. We're, we answer the phone. We want to do that. But you guys got to have a life somewhere. There's got to be some sort, some sort of balance there. And, and Todd, I want to talk to you too about um, if you guys haven't been to Todd's website, todduncan.com, and read more about his personal story. Um, take the five minutes to do it because it's an incredible story of perseverance and incredible story of love and loss. And um, you have been through the gamut. Um, I think people, when they get beaten down a little bit, um, like we're seeing right now in our industry, people are just getting a little bit beaten down. Yeah. Um, 
and you know, you, you just talked earlier about your attitude of when you wake up every day, like, how can I help somebody? And how can I, how can I do that? How important is it for you to be vulnerable with those new partners you get in relationships and, and work new title attorneys or new uh, realtors you're working with? How important is it for you to be vulnerable and open and genuine with those people and let them in to who you are right away? Yeah, it's, um, it's a really, it's a really great question. And I think that what ends up happening so often is we, we try to, to really hold up a, I don't know, a persona that is strong and real and, you know, maybe even fed a little bit by ego and strength. And, you know, you have pride in your life and you, 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 you're proud of the things that you've done. And, um, and I think to, to lead with that is dangerous because if it's too much, then it's a turn off. Mm -hmm. And yet on the other end of it, to lead with vulnerability and authenticity and transparency um, can be initially a sign of weakness. Somewhere in there is this magical hum human connection where um, by sharing and being transparent and being vulnerable, Brene Brown says that the best way to have to be more courageous, you know, the best way to have more courage is to do things that are more courageous. And part of courage is sharing your story. And, and, you know, at some level, Jen, everybody has some layer or multiple layers of their life that are broken, that they're just not working the right way. And human connection is about transparency and, and emotion. And what we know about emotional connection is it's a much more attractive thing than economic connection. I mean, people can give you loans all day long because you've got great rates and you, you can get the deal done. But at the end of the day, um, I'd rather have people give me loans because we have connected emotionally and deeply. And I think at some level, we all have to do that, right? If, if we're in a marriage, you, you are more connected emotionally and you should consistently be more connected. I got asked by Success Magazine to do an interview on failure. And the hard, hard reality was we have a business that teaches people how to be successful, not how to fail. And I'm in the midst of one of the greatest setbacks of my life. And it took seven and a half years of my life to get through this, which included losing my, my first wife to breast cancer. And, um, and when I did this interview with Success Magazine, it was like, how vulnerable do I want to be? And, and how much do I want to share? And... Um, at the end of the day, I decided to just be open and just reveal. And it was interesting that that negative period in my life has now impacted over 6 million entrepreneurs because I decided to get vulnerable and share my real story, my real truth, and, and not feeling that I have to be something that I'm not. And there's, there's a lot of power in that. So the lesson, the lesson for all of us is you've got to be... Uh, authentic and transparent with yourself first. That's where it starts. If you're trying to pull the wool over your own eyes, you're never going to get anywhere. So what's true? What is true? And, and how does that work or not work for you? And then do you really see failure and success as symbiotic partners to each other? And that's really what it's about. Because if, if, if I'm talking about hot water, there's no such thing as hot water unless there's also cold water. Yeah. If I'm talking about daylight, there's no such thing as daylight if there were not such a thing as darkness and night, right? If I'm talking about winning, there's no possibility that winning has a definition unless there's also the possibility of losing. That's what make the two work. So in, <clears throat> in the business world, success and failure are, they're symbiotically linked. You cannot have success if you're not willing to also experience failure. And the key to the failure piece is to learn the big lessons sooner than later. And don't continue to repeat negative behaviors that create the same negative outcome. Because if we're not changing and we're not, we're not growing, then we're, we're gonna be somewhere next year or the year after the year after that, but we're actually gonna be right where we were two years earlier, three years earlier, because we're not, we're not willing to change. So failure is a very powerful, positive force and you've got to see it is good i've got this my mug says my cup is always i like yeah you can see it my cup is always, always full. full and uh you know martin seligman talks about optimism and 
the, the whole decision to be optimistic over pessimistic changes your performance in life by two or three X. And so what's good about the failure? I mean, if, if I have a failure, what's good about it? And is there lessons in that that I can share with others? And so authenticity and vulnerability and transparency are actually superpowers. Yeah. And they allow a realness that attracts people. And attraction marketing is more important than promotional marketing, hands down, all day long. Yeah. And Todd, if th this is just a preview of, of the, <laughs> the three days of the Sales Mastery event coming up. And I'm pretty sure you're a relationship therapist as well as a loan officer therapist. Like, I'm just sitting here taking notes because I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I could do this in my life. Um, if people want to be part of Sales Mastery, what do they need to do? Where do they need to go? Well, so movement has done something really big, you know, in my conversations with Darren and, and uh, Casey, you know, they, they've decided to let the whole company attend. And so we received a list of almost 3,900 people, I guess, last week. So most people at movement are registered. They're going to get their logins uh, in the next couple of days for next week's event. Um, if you want, anybody wants to just check out what we're doing, just go to salesmasteryevent.com and uh, you can see the agenda, you can see the speakers, you can see a lot of the things we're doing. And, uh, and the neat thing is that when the event is over, um, we've decided this year to let everybody have access to all the material for no additional charge for a month. So you could continue to learn and grow and get better. So I'm, man, you know, I was on a call with your leadership team last week and they are unique. They are, yes, they're they just, are. I was so attracted to all of them. And of course, Casey, you know, as, as one of the, the co-founders and leaders, it's just, you guys have a really powerful, in fact, the t-shirt I had on that day was culture always wins. And I think that's what makes movement so powerful as a company. They've got a real DNA about caring and loving each other and, and wanting to do the right thing for society and for the business. And it's a, it's a beautiful culture to witness from the outside looking in. And I'm sure you feel it every day being there. I, I do. And I, I am in a different boat too. And I'm, I'm lucky and I try to make sure that everybody else can feel what I feel. Cause I do get to be with some of those leaders a little bit more um, and sitting in the room with them, just being around them. It's, it's incredible. Um, the leadership from the top down, what they can bring, what they bring to everybody at Movement. So yeah. very lucky, very, very lucky to, uh, to have Movement as my place of employment. And give me one thing, Todd, if people are going to take away one thing from Sales Mastery, what is a number one thing you want people to take away and come away with and, and take into their lives moving forward the rest of this year, the rest next five years? Yeah, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is just the word impact. And, um, and I think at the end of the day, the world revolves around value and the world revolves around impact. And um, I think that everybody has to look today at the changing dynamics of the world marketplace and still understand that it's always been about value. Value is the way you impact. And so I'd really, uh, I would look, I would start to look at that word impact as like a holy word. You know, what, what am I doing to really beyond the mortgage impact people. And if you learn that and, and you walk away with strategies on how to do that, um, you have the world by the tail. I mean, you really do. And, and the future's, the future's always going to be based on he who has the best value usually has the best attraction and therefore then earns the right to have the greatest impact. That's awesome. Yeah. Todd, thank you so much for your time. Really looking forward to Sales Mastery. I will, I will be involved in all of those. Todd Duncan, Todd Duncan Podcast and Sales Mastery. Thanks, Jen.